Hey guys, it's Graham. What's cracking? This is my review of Spellcheck, the 2014 YA semi supernatural book by Julie Wright. Full disclosure, Julie is a friend of mine, but don't hold that against her. She is a good writer. I've read a couple of her books, and I think this one's my favorite. It first came out when I was, let's see, I was 30, and I read it that year. And uh, I liked it, and then I haven't read it since. I've decided to reread it this year. And uh, I've got basically the same assessment of it now that I had then. And I even kind of slowed down right around the same part. To compare this to something, it's, it's kind of in the vein of Hocus Pocus, kind of in the vein of Sabrina the Teenage Witch. But uh, it's very much an example of like the, the wholesome YA teen girl protagonist era of fiction. I've got two pictures on the thumbnail here. The one on the left is the old cover. The one on the right is the new cover. I prefer the old one, but I can tell why they switched because, I don't know, the old one is evocative of a different style of book. It doesn't really convey a whole bunch of whimsy, I guess. And there is, there is some whimsy and some lightness to this story. Uh, there is a a prophecy and a chosen one and that kind of thing going on too. And I think that part is better represented in the old cover, but I feel like they're trying to go for a little bit more of like the playfulness with the new one. And that was the element that they wanted to hype up. So main character is a girl named Allie. She lives in Salem, Massachusetts, and she finds out on her sweet 16th birthday that she's actually a witch but she's not like descended to or connected to, excuse me, descended from or connected to the 1692 Salem witches. She's connected to it all through some Swedish thing because her uh, paternal grandmother was Swedish, is Swedish, and is a witch. And uh, yeah, when you turn 16, your powers kick in. But because Allie is a good girl, oh, geez, I swear I could talk. A good girl who stays out of trouble and is focused on getting good grades, like uh, most of these like teen girl protagonists were. Uh, she's bullied by the usual suspects, in this case, like the rich, snobby cheerleader girls, because uh, all cheerleaders are evil. We know this. And they pull a prank on her where um, like they leave her tied up to in a tree in October in Massachusetts, like. It's totally not murder. It's, it was a prank, bro. Anyway, like this is on her birthday and like lightning strikes across the sky. And she's so mad that like she wishes all the cheerleaders hair turns green and they get like the mega flu and whatever. And anyway, some friends come along, they pull her down out of the tree. And the next day she goes to school and all the cheerleaders hair is turned green and they're sick. And she's like, whoa, that's weird. And uh, lo and behold, like she slowly realizes through random uses of the words, I wish dot, 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 that she's making weird things happen around her. The title spell check isn't just a clever play on words because it's about a girl who casts spells. It's because whenever she does cast spells, there is a cost to it. There's a weird imbalance it's like the meme of the genie who you ask him for something and he finds some way to screw you over she, without knowing the rules of how this magic is supposed to work uh if she just wishes for things willy-nilly uh it can go sideways pretty fast case in point her parents are divorced even though they both live in the same town like they they both love the kids but they hate each other and she wishes that they'll get back together, but because there are rules about like, you know, you can't mess with love, you can't mess with the government, you can't mess with the economy, like you can't wish for a million dollars, you can't wish for yourself to become president, that kind of thing. Obviously, she can't force her parents back together, but she doesn't know this. And so the magic goes haywire and like teleports both of her parents to the freaking Amazon jungle where they are forced to work together to survive like massive snakes and everything trying to kill them. And <laughs> so just then the girl's grandma shows up and uh, starts explaining stuff to her and like teleports down to the Amazon to, to find her parents and bring them back and start setting everything right. But there's more to it than that. It's not just the, like the whole, Oh yeah, you've got powers and you shouldn't mess around with this stuff. Um, she's also like, you know, in the long line of, 
powerful witches and is the chosen one and there are people that want her power and there are the trials coming up, etc., etc. All of the elements of this are very familiar, but it still stands out in my memory as kind of like a unique and exemplary type of this book. Like this is this is all stuff that feels very familiar and has been done before, but it's done so well that I I've enjoyed it about the same both times that I've read it. The only time that the story slowed down for me is when she's able to handle a lot of the mundane stuff that she screwed up with her magic, as well as interpersonal relationship uh, drama. You know, she's got a best friend who's on the cheer squad, but she's not evil like the rest of the cheerleaders. And she ends up uh, sort of accidentally falling into the good graces of this boy she likes, who is sort of the boyfriend of the evil cheerleader queen. Like there's typical high school drama but it's done tastefully. It's wholesome. I mean, it's kind of like reading a Hallmark novel, I guess, but it's not that cheesy. It's just, it's, it's well-trod ground and it's executed well. But once that stuff is all set aside and she actually gets into the business of like having to go through the trials, like to figure out her witch powers and everything. Um, there were five tests that she had to do. And oddly enough, like at that point, the tension of the story kind of lessened for me because like, I didn't have any doubts that she was going to succeed. It's not that she hadn't struggled or had hardships and stuff through them. Like she just shown herself to be a competent protagonist, even though she had a steep learning curve. But I felt like the the real crux of the book was her navigating her powers and the interpersonal drama with her friends and her classmates. And then like once the actual trials popped up, like it was, it was still difficult, but she made it through. Um, And then like the, the dust settles at the end and she's got to figure out how to balance her new powers with, her life and the rules and does she tell this boy that she likes and so on and so forth. Like if you've read other books in this genre from this type time period, from this cluster of authors, um, you know, female LDS authors writing YA protagonists, they're all cut from the same cloth and made from the same mold. And this is where me having a, a slight amount of inside baseball knowledge of it comes to bear because uh, a lot of these female authors, Julie Wright, Jeanette Rallis, and others, like they've all raised daughters that were very similar to their protagonists. You know, girls who stay out of trouble and worry a lot about good grades and have like good wholesome crushes on smart boys who are like in student government or whatever. Like they they don't chase the bad boys. They don't go deal with drugs or whatever. The kind of people that you would want your neighbors to be, like the, the kind of protagonist that's easy to root for and that, you know, if you're a parent, you hope your own kid grows up to be like them. That's what makes this like a, a, a comfort read, but it's still got plenty of those like very whimsical, supernatural Halloween type elements to make it a tasteful seasonal read. So whenever I put together like a list of Halloween books to get into, I almost always like invariably recommend spell check in the mix of it all, just as a great example of like that, that wholesome YA of yesteryear before everything became like 43 year old cat ladies trying to rewrite their own high school careers where everybody's basically like clubbing and doing drugs and having sex, which is just what they're all doing now. Uh, but I digress. Anyway, go check out spell check. Um, it's a story about a girl trying to figure out how to keep her spells in check and knowing when and how and why to uh, use the, Swedish witch magic that she unwittingly inherited through her bloodline. Very good book. Highly recommend. Four stars. Till next time, drive safe. See you out there.